All right, on to the next one here. Okay, so what did I do? I kind of, I guess I've never seen this before, but I clicked start and then I said no to this thing and then it ended up down here. So I have to now revisit, but we're going to look at the 1099 uh, for interest, dividends, and stock sales. So we're going to hit revisit. What I did here is I clicked it and then I said no thanks to this. But uh, yeah, so if you hit no thanks, what will happen is you'll come back here and then it doesn't, you don't see it here. You have to kind of scroll down to check that out again. Nonetheless, here we go. Um, investment income. Okay, is what you got to check. This is what I got. All right, continue. Okay, so you can actually get it straight from your brokerage account, but I'm not going to do that because for illustration purposes, I don't want to log in. Okay, enter in a different way. I'm going to show you how to do it from the actual 1099 itself. Okay, so what do we have? Let's start with one. We'll start with the interest, the easy one. Okay, bring it over from my bait, upload it from my computer. Let's see what happens here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to show you first what I'm uploading. Let's take a look. Let's try this one here. We'll do like this one here. This is a 1099 we got for 200 bucks. Okay, 2021 from the bank and to Joe Schmo. There we go. Okay, uh, let's upload this one here. That's shoot. That's this one, right? Another look is the one. All right, here we go. It's thinking, see if they get that two, what was it, 229, right? I think so. 220, 220, sorry, 220. Let's see if they get that info on there. All right, look at that. They got it. That's great. Um, interest from savings. I didn't have any of that. So this is a pretty straightforward 1099 interest that we got from the bank. Okay. There's nothing else other than, and you'll see our boxes here, they say. So there's nothing in box. What does it say? Box three, there's zero. There's nothing here. Zero. Okay. There's nothing at all. The only thing we have is box one. Okay. We're just going to put zeros everywhere. All right. Let me make changes. Okay. Deal. That's it. Um, we'll say California zero, 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 zero. California, done. Continue. All right. Do any of these uncommon situations apply? I need to may I need to adjust the interest reported on the form. No, my state doesn't tax uh, all of this interest. So you know, if you're in one of those states and that pertains to you, you click that button. But I'm in California. We tax all income here, of course. Um, well, not all, but there we go. All right. So we got that one done. Let's see if we upload a different one that looks a little. Because let's see here, one like this. This is also, this is actually more common that we see this type of form come out. Okay, let's see what happens when we upload that. That was 30, there it is, $38, $37.54. Um, we're going to say enter it a different way. We're going to say we have interest and we are going to upload it. Okay, here we go. Continue and we're going to hit the, here it is, voila. All right, come on. Okay, same thing. Nice, I got it. Thirty-seven fifty-four from the credit union. Nothing else. So we're just gonna enter zeros. Oh, that's it. Nice. Continue. None of those apply. Again, continue. All right, here we go. Add another investment. Okay, now let's see if we take a look at the dividends. Okay, here we go. What's my dividend ones I have here? It is, this is like a composite. This is actually really popular with like TD Ameritrade, Morgan Stanley, Charles Schwab, those types of things, brokerage accounts, okay? We get something that looks a lot like this. And on here, you'll have the dividends, okay? Um, they also have like the 1099, what we call B. You'll see that in a second, but these are stock sales down here. Also, right, if we had any like uh, contracts, straddles, um, those will pop up there. Um, and then there's also like an interest income if you got any. Obviously, there's two cents on this one. That would be a zero, essentially. Uh, they round down on the tax return, so we won't need to put that in there. But let's see how it takes this here. It should be able to take this because this is a really common form. Upload it from my computer. Continue. Drag and drop. Let's see what happens here. Come on, TurboTax. Man, taking a bit here, huh? There's a lot of information on this thing, I bet. That's why. Wow, look at that. Okay, so you'll want to make sure you get the basics correct, but you'll see the payers, taxpayer identification number. 
get that correct, put the, the name of the brokerage company, right? That's what I'm putting right here. You'll get, okay, look at this, dividends. Did it get it? Wow, okay. Box 1A, 930, 29, okay. 2A, 2125, okay. Good deal, look at that. Um, what else? Qualified, 80... 850, 51. Okay, good job. Nice. Okay, I'm going to capture collectibles. Okay, so this, okay, I think it's got all this too. So what's the next one? We have uh, non-dividend distributions. Okay, got that one. Box five, what do we have in box five? Yep, 26 cents. Deal. Box seven is the next one. Foreign taxes paid. Deal. Wow, that was good. All right. Uh, states, there's nothing with the states here. So, well, you know what? We could probably just close. That's probably easier to do, huh? There we go. Continue. All right. Portion of these dividends is U.S. government interest, right? You'll know that if you have these, they would say those on that 1099, but none of these apply here. These are uncommon. These are definitely uncommon. You'll know if you have something like this, though, okay? Do not apply. All right, so there's that. So we have interest, dividends, interest. Let's see, what else do we need to do? Let's do some stock sales, okay? We're gonna say enter a different way. 1099B, stock sales, here we go. Continue. Oh, fun stuff. You can read about this, how this works, but I'm not going to. I'm just gonna go straight into it. Okay, which bank or broker sent you this? Okay, you can do this. I'm gonna say... Brokerage, doesn't really matter. Okay, continue. Tell us about, do these sales include any stock options? I will come back to this, but I'm gonna say in this case, no. Okay, I'll have a separate video on that one. Do you, cause that's a whole different ball of wax, these things. They have all their own separate, very specific rules that is too much for this video. Do you have more than three sales? I'm gonna say yes. Uh, yes, we have more than that, right? If we take a look here, right? We have, this is like the summary here of all the sales, okay? But if we keep scrolling, right, we'll see all the individual sales themselves. And there's a lot, right? There's a lot of sales. Okay, that's that was it. But each one, that's a sale, that's a sale, right? These are all date disposed, okay? There's that. Do these sales include any other types of investments? Land, collectibles? No, they're all stocks. Did you buy every investment listed? Yes, I did. Then none of these were gifted or inherited. Okay, there's separate video for this. It's like a whole different uh, ball of wax for that thing. Sales section total. So you can either go one by one on the, let's see here, stock sales, or you can do these for the totals, like the summary here. Generally, I like to do the totals, but sometimes it's more beneficial to do the um, one by one, okay? But I'd say nine times out of 10, I'm just gonna do the summary here, um, okay? For entering, okay, we get it. So what they're saying here there is, you see how these are separately listed, right? That's how we're gonna have to put this on TurboTax too, right? And if, right, there's, whoops, no, those ones, here we go, like this one here. Right, and you'll see on the form 8949, this is how they're going to be reported, right, with this little code here, okay? Um, so we wanna make sure that we do do that properly here as well. Okay, so sales section, right, it'll say here. So let's say for this one, we have uh, short-term basis is reported to the IRS. So that's what we'll click here, short-term basis is reported, and that's what we're doing, proceeds. How much did we sell it for? 41 49.62. Okay, and, and cost basis, right? How much did we buy this thing for? 24.69.18. 24.69.18. There we go. Continue. There it is. Add another one because we have another line here. This one we're going to use, let's see here in this example. This is long term basis is not reported to the IRS. Okay, so we'll say. Long-term basis is not reported to the IRS. How much did we sell it for? 21.13.51, 21.13.51. And cost basis, how much did we buy it for? 18.19.66, 18.19.66. Okay, there we go. 
All right. Um, this is a little more uncommon, but you'll see is that, I mean, well, this is kind of immaterial, $42. If this was a very big amount, I would be concerned. But in this case, I'm not too concerned. So we're essentially just going to report the $42 as gain. But what happened here, undetermined, you'll see, right, basis is not reported. So I believe, generally speaking, what happens is you, like you buy this stock like a long time ago, and then maybe brokerage accounts get, uh, like banks get bought out by bigger ones. So it goes from like, you know, one bank to another bank. Um, and during that transition, the basis or like the cost that or the, you know, the amount that you bought the stock for doesn't get reported or transferred over to the new bank. And that's what's happening here. So that's why they just don't even have record of how much you bought it for. Um, so if this is a bigger amount, you'll have to do research on your end, you know, and try and find out how much you bought that stock for. Okay. But $42, I'm not going to, you know, worry too much about something like this. So I'm just going to report it all as gain, um, for tax purposes here. So we'll say this is short term basis, not reported. Um, okay. So it could either be right. B or E is what this is saying. So B or E. So if it's, this would be more conservative. You're going to get taxed at a, at a higher rate if you hit the short, um, short term versus a long term. Long term capital gain rates are better. Um, so you'll pay less tax if you do do the long, but um, the short, you'll pay more tax since we don't know really too much of the details on this. And you can actually see down here, right? Undetermined. This is it. This is that exact section. We'll see. All right, this was the stock that was bought, this ETF, okay? Uh, proceeds, how much did we buy it for? When did we acquire it? Not a, we don't know. This is like an unknown here. So do, we don't really know. Since we don't know, I'm going to take the conservative route. Uh, it's $42. Again, not going to go too much, you know, into uh, researching this. It's not going to be worth our time to kind of do this, okay? So we're just going to report what they have here, the $42, what was it, $42.15, $42.15, and we'll say the basis is zero. Simple as that. All right, there it is. Done. Now we'll need to upload. Now we'll help you upload 1090B since ours requires a copy. Okay, let's see here. So we go here, hit our 1099 composite. That's it. Voila. Continue. All right, there it is. We're done. We got the interest, stock sales, and the dividends. Confirm. All right, check your capital gains. You have 4,000 in capital gains. Pretty good. There's about $1,000 in income there.